Now here's a white person and a black person. You know what? I don't see color. I see scum and I see scum. How about you? After police said they assaulted a Salvation Army bell ringer at a restaurant in White Plains, it happened at 3 p.m. Saturday at the Smash Burger on Terrenton Road. Police say 41-year-old bell ringer who is legally blind. He was volunteering and he was blind. Was on his break and standing in line with 30-year-old Ron Rodriguez and 21-year-old Adriana Wignall when Rodriguez accused the victim of cutting the line. That's when police said Rodriguez punched the victim, knocking him to the ground. He then stabbed the victim and continued to hit him in the head while Wiggle kicked him. So there you go. There's some nice uh, nice people for you. Mention them here on the Dumb of the Day, a Dunce Cap of the Month show. Way to go, scum. Um, we got from MRCTV.org, a video. Students signed petition to ban the racist song White Christmas from the radio. Yep. White Christmas, meaning snow. But unless you live in Fukushima or Chernobyl, the snow isn't black. Therefore, because you're not singing about a black Christmas, you're a racist. This is another incident of college-age students being too stupid to learn anything about history, their own history, White Christmas, and students and administrators, teachers and administrators and masters being too stupid to teach anyone anything. Last week I presented some college students with a potential urging radio, radio stations to stop playing the holiday classic White Christmas because the song focuses on White Christmases. This clearly makes it racially insensitive since it completely ignores Christmases of other colors. Students were all too willing to check their privilege and take a stand. That's right, you can see the video there. They line up to ban White Christmas. Again, it's a parody, but you get the point. They actually fell for it. WashingtonTimes.com Do you know they banned Christmas in Brunei? <laughs> Merry Christmas, Brunei. So the clock is counting down. This was dated before Christmas, and most of the world will celebrate Christmas. Uh, Russia, part of the Orthodox. But on the 25th, Western Pacific, Christmas has been banned and was banned in Brunei. Why? Because of Muslims. Now, I'm not saying that all Muslims want to do this. Here's what I am saying. In America, most Americans do not want us involved in the foreign policy wars that we are involved in. But the worst of the worst have ascended to leadership status in our country. Well, guess what? Islam seems to have a major problem with the worst of the worst getting in charge of their countries when they take over. It goes from Tolerant to Muslim to Sharia. Why? I don't know, but it does. December 22nd, angered by her, and this is great, this is from Smoking Gun. Cops, a woman beat her husband over flatulence. That is farting for you Lady Gaga fans. Angered by her husband's repeated farting in bed. A real genius, a Florida woman allegedly elbowed, kicked, and scratched her spouse, according to the police who arrested her for battery. Don Meikle, 55, there she is, fat cam, is facing misdemeanor, misdemeanor charges following a 3.20 a.m. confrontation in Port St. Lucie in a home that she shares with her husband. She threw him out of bed when he passed gas. He came back into bed, passed gas again, and she began elbowing and kicking him. He sought to restrain her. She scratched him and uh, beat him several times. She pepper sprayed him as well. Do you see the stupidity that is rampant in our nation? It's, it's not just our leaders. As you can see from the bell ringer story and now this, we have the dumbest people ever in our country right now. I've never, ever witnessed anything in any nation as powerful as us being so stupid. 
CNS News, Re Representative Frank to Obama, how much longer will you remain appalling, appallingly silent on Islamic State genocide of Christians? Uh, again, uh, Dumdy here going to Obama. Trent Franks reminded the president about the brutal persecution of Christians, Yazidis, and other religious groups by the Islamic State and questioned why Obama has been so appallingly silent. Um, that speaks for itself. You can read that article quickly. End of the American Dream again, Michael Snyder. The Pope says that this Christmas is a charade and that some people, and for some people it may be their last. This is what he said. Um, he talks about the terrorist attacks, of course. He said, uh, it's all a charade. The world has not understood the way of peace. The whole world is at war. And what he said is actually true in every possible way. But it goes on. The 79-year-old pontiff said, while the world starves, burns, and descends further into chaos. We should realize that this year's Christmas celebrations, for those who choose to celebrate it, it may be their last. Now, is he just saying that this is for the poor Christians being butchered in in uh, the Middle East? Or is he saying that uh, maybe there's something we don't know? A lot of people have said that he could be the last pope. So, I mean, it's food for thought. Got the pontiff saying last Christmas might have been the last Christmas. Campus reform! Anthony Gakowski, psych! Professor says the Beatles fans have powers and privilege. That's right. If you're a Beatles fan, you have power and privilege. Professor Adam Rodriguez of Notre Dame de Namur University in Belmont, California, published an op-ed in the Huffington Compost directed at a friend who has found it impossible that he would not love the Beatles. According to Adam Rodriguez, the professor who you should write and tell him he's an idiot at uh, Notre Dame Denham University, has enjoyed the privilege of not having to consider that there are people in the world that don't have the same relationship to music. So Rodriguez took to the keyboard to type out his frustrations, saying, uh, for him, that was a given. The given was that everybody would love the Beatles. My lack of interest in their music could only be understood by him as psychopathy. So it's, it's all about privilege if you like the Beatles. What's funny is, I guess I'm right privileged. I've never been that big of a fan. I think the Beatles were okay. The Doors were far better. Whatever. Mind, see, see what the dumdies are? Now we're getting into the meat and potato dumdies, too. Whereas you can see the top that we're winding down quickly. Christians in China feel the full force of authorities' repression. That's just a quick one. Now, Pastor Su Tianfu slides in his back seat and tells the driver to hit it. Why? Because in the days before Christmas, instead of working on his sermon, he's trying to lose the tail in China. In other words, they were trying. They say, oh, you can have Christian sermons. And then they follow the pastors around, and they call that freedom. That's a self-explanatory dumdy as well. You can look that story up. Um, the credit card data reveals first holiday spending decline since the Great Recession. Tyler Durden, 12-2-2015. The reason I give this a dumb D is because you had, the uh, according to the BOFA, that uh, the holiday was particularly low this year, but that it was greatly going to pick up. Well, BOFA, guess what? It did not. And for three weeks ending on Black Friday, the bank finds that early holiday sales were down 1.2%. Well, you know what? It never went back up. So all you people that uh, based your, uh, your year-end stock buys on the BOFA, guess what? You got hosed. Thank you, Tyler Durden. Uh, the Denver Post. Police man in Santa suit stabs bus rider in Lakewood, flees on foot. Now, I wish this Santa had been the one that was robbed and we could have evened this out. Kirk Mitchell, Lakewood police are searching for a man who was dressed like Santa. Wow, he looks like Santa. He's easy to find. Why? Because he allegedly stabbed another man on an RTD bus early Thursday morning. The 33-year-old victim was taken to the hospital saying he was stabbed by Santa Claus. They'd like to get the dangerous man off the street. No crap, you don't say. Maybe, maybe you might want to do that. I don't know. Call a hunch. DailyCaller.com. Town of Bethlehem bans Merry Christmas signs. Don't give me separation of church and state. What that means is that the government cannot endorse a religion. It does not mean that anyone cannot 
display a religion, learn what definitions mean. That's kind of been the resounding theme in this show, hasn't it? <coughs> Casey Harper. The town of Bethlehem, named after the birthplace of Jesus Christ, has banned signs celebrating the holidays at the intersection in the town that's become a local battleground for the war on Christmas. So Bethlehem has bound, banned anything that has to do with Christmas as not to offend anybody. The Christian legal group, the Alliance Defending Freedom, has weighed in to let the town know they should not be afraid. No one should fear saying Merry Christmas on a sign like this and it will violate the Constitution because it does not. The courts all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court have been clear that the government can erect Christmas signs and displays, including nativity scenes, without having the fear of con not constitutional violation. How long until they want to change the name from Bethlehem? Mark my words, how long? Dumdy of the day. I told you, dumdy, dumdy. We get dumber as we go. Daily Mail. This is brought to you by Change Transportation. If you're within 50 mile radius of Canton, Ohio, look up Change Transportation. You're going to get a better deal than you will from anyone else. Monkey steals a bus and crashes it into two parked vehicles while driving here, takes a nap in India. Um, he's probably got a contract like the one I had when I drove for Yellow Cab, where they drove you to the point of exhaustion and you'd make $40 in a day and starve to death. Um, but this driver had to be mentioned in our show because it was pretty dumb. Uh, that monkey looks like George Bush, doesn't it? One of the most bizarre traffic accidents of the year has taken place in northern India, where a monkey be stolen and crashed a bus. The monkey managed to start the engine of the bus while the driver was taking a nap, and he even got it moving. <laughs> oh, my God. The bus hit two other parked vehicles, parked in a garage in Barely, Uttar Pradesh State, before the driver was able to regain control. The Chico had been parked at the local bus station between routes and the conductor had stepped out for a break. The driver, seizing an opportunity for a nap, stretched out in the back, leaving the keys in the ignition and a monkey stole it and crashed it into two cars. Hilarious. Um, Star Wars themed nativity celebration in New Jersey. At first I thought I was going to be against this, but it's not really as dumb as it sounds. The way it was sold was dumb. New Brunswick, a New Jersey pastor and Star Wars enthusiast, is using the Force to tell the Christmas story this year. Liquid Church, a non-denominational contemporary Christian church, is holding cosmic Christmas services at multiple campuses that will weave parts of the Star Wars movies together with biblical theology. Pastor Tom Lucas, who has no relation to George Lucas, said... Now, at first I thought, what kind of blasphemy is this? But it's not. They're using Star Wars characters the same way that uh, Charles Dickens used Scrooge. Uh, they're, not, they're, not, they're not blasphemous here. Lucas, who was dressed as Han Solo for the occasion, said there were parallels between the Bible and Star Wars, particularly in the good versus evil cosmology. And we're telling the story of Christmas from the book of Revelations. It's the last book in the Bible, and it imagines on Christmas Eve this battle between Star Wars and the dark side and the light. So basically they made a Christmas play based around Star Wars. That's not so bad. Guys, we've only got three stories left. The dumbest of the dumb. The stupid of the stupid. The moronic of the moronic. It's time. Gateway Pundit, leading far-left website, would be Salon, which is a rag. White men must be stopped for the future of mankind. <laughs> Salon.com, the future of life on the planet depends on bringing the 500-year-old rampage of white man to a halt. You know, the man who, the people that invented the wheel. We'd be at a halt without us. For five centuries, his ever more destructive weaponry has become far too common. His widespread and better systems of exploiting other humans and nature dominate the globe. The time for replacing white supremacy with the new values is now. And to keep in mind, there is no white supremacy. Just as some whites played a part in ending slavery, colonialism, and Jim Crow segregation in South African apartheid, there is a surely a role for whites can play in restraining what other whites can do. 
Beneath the sound and fury generated by GOP candidates, Fox News website trolls, police unions, and others, white people are becoming aware, as never before, of past and present racism. To hell with that! My family never owned slaves. They had anything to do with slavery. Most of my family wasn't even here during the slave days. And I was not part of the 1%. And if you weren't part of the 1%, you, your family never owned slaves either. Do you know that the few, the, the, the few people that did own slaves are the people that are still in charge? It's not people like me. Admittedly, this encouraging development is hardly a dominant view. To the contrary, given the publicity that Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, and Ben Carson are for their ilk might be president, white supremacist ideology to be digging in harder than ever. So Ben Carson's black, and he still gets accused of having white ideology. Did you hear that? They listed a black man as someone furthering white supremacy. I told you we were at the dumb deal of the dumb, didn't I? Salon is a stupid rag anyway. Now this pervert, I was going to give, I swear I was going to give the, the dunce cap of the month to this freaking idiot pervert, selfish prick bastard, but I didn't because he's in Canada. And the correct views does not send to other countries. It costs too much. Now you can help me. The correct views on Hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Donate. Correct views on Hotmail.com. The correct views at hotmail.com. PJ Dub, transgender father abandoned seven children to become a six year old girl. A transgender pervert, selfish bastard father, I might have added a few words there, who abandoned his seven children to start a life as a six year old girl is being celebrated by some liberals as a shining example of diversity. Yeah, just abandon your wife and your kids. That's awesome. 46-year-old Stephanie Walshot, W-R-L-S-C-H-L-T-T, is being profiled by numerous media outlets. You can see the link on FactCam. After he, she, is he revealed her story. I'll say his story. In a video premiere for the Transgender Project, another bunch of boneheads, Walsh is now dressing up and pretending to be a six-year-old girl with her adopted family after being given an ultimatum by ex-wife who said to stop being trans or leave. So instead of dressing up in women's clothing, he just abandoned his wife. Look at this idiot. There you go. I'll tell you. Take a good look at this bonehead. Look at this sick pervert. Now again, I don't care if somebody is transgendered. It doesn't bother me in the least. It really doesn't. And to each their own. But here's what bothers me. This sick, twisted freak is being viewed as a hero. That's right, a hero. Wolf's choose to abandon her 23-year-old marriage along with her seven kids and is now fulfilling, I should say, his role as little sister to her new parents and youngest granddaughter. If you're having trouble trying to understand this insanity, don't worry. The video below will make it even more clear. Yeah, it makes you want to vomit. Now, she says she's a six-year-old girl. She was going to be an eight-year-old girl. But the little girl that's in the family that adopted her and lets this freak play with their children and play girly with them? This family has adopted and he well, I wanted to be the youngest, so I turned myself into a six-year-old girl. There's a there's a straitjacket waiting for this person in any country but ours, I swear. This is child abuse, and there's been other people that have said that the understanding grandparents are actually in a really weird, sick, twisted sexual relationship with him. And again, I don't care about that either. Well, like, look at the family he left behind, so he could dress up and pretend he's a little girl because he didn't want to be an adult anymore. I have an adopted mommy and daddy, this freak said, who are totally comfortable with me being a little girl and their children and grandchildren are totally supportive, said Walsh, who originally decided to be eight years old, but then changed to being six years old so that she could be the youngest. 
and we have a great time. We color and do kid stuff. It's called play therapy. No, it's called child abuse. The clip has received over 160,000 views, but feedback is overwhelmingly negative. I would imagine so. However, a majority of the respondents at the Independent article had a different opinion, saying, oh, that's great. Oh, yeah, that's just great. Abandon your family. That, that's wonderful. One commentator has it right. What this report doesn't tell you is that this person was charged with assault and abuse of his wife and family. They were awarded a restraining order against him. In other words, he abused them. He has been convicted of harassment and threatening a neighbor and being a peeping Tom, looking in windows. Oh, he's a sexual pervert. Could you imagine? No, they said he makes out with bikers. He, he invites bikers who want to pretend they're molesting a six-year-old girl. They get in dresses and kiss this adult male and pretend that he's a six-year-old girl. And the other kids are allowed to be around this. Also, his arrangement with his mummy and daddy is a sexual one. He has waxed lyrically about visiting a fetish club with his daddy and how girly he felt when daddy penetrated him for the first time. Did you hear that? So the daddy is in on this whole sex thing too. He is disturbed, violent, and a creepy fetishist. Commentators think it's okay for a six-year-old girl to be brought into a situation to act as his playmate or sister. The heck is wrong with you people? When will you wake up and smell the coffee about what is being pushed of some noble vanguard of trans rights? At least somebody has a little bit of common sense in all of Canada. Going over an hour, friends, the dumb of the, yeah, the month. God, I've been doing this for over an hour. I'm all caught up on these. Finally. Dum dee dum dee dum dee dum dee dum dee dum dee What's the dum dee dum dee? All right, friends. It goes to uh, Houston's Tomball Regional Medical Center. It's the only reason I'm here now, said the son, as he awakens from a quote, they said, brain-dead state. After gun-toting dad engages in a three-hour arm standoff with police to block doctors from pulling the plug on life support. Listen to this. This hospital should be shut down. It should be shut the hell down, or at least sold to, none of the people that own this hospital should be allowed to have it. How about that? A father took a gun into a hospital <clears throat> to stop doctors taking his son off of life support. And during the three-hour standoff, the young man squeezed his hand. Now, how many of you know about the little baby that woke up from uh, being uh, pulled off life support? We reported on that around Christmas. Look it up. Correct views, baby beats death. The sign that he wasn't brain dead meant that he was kept alive, and he is now recovering and doing well. In other words, the father was right, the doctors were wrong. The father knows his son. They didn't want, he didn't let his kid get Terry shivo so they're calling him a criminal. Any, any, other, any other country would have called him a hero. His father, 59-year-old George Pickering II, was charged with two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after marching into Tumble Regional Medical Center in Texas with a gun. Oh, as if he did it for no reason at all. His 27-year-old son, George III, has been declared, had been declared brain dead after suffering massive strokes in Janu a stroke in January. After doctors declared that the, there was no more hope for him, they ordered a terminal wean, whereby life support is slowly withdrawn to end a life. Pickering's ex-wife ex -wife and other son had agreed to the move, and the young man had been already placed on the organ donation register. But Pickering Sr., it says, told KPRC they were moving too fast. The hospital, the nurses, the doctors, I knew if it had three or four hours that night that he would know whether or not George was really or not brain dead. So do you realize what's going on here? They didn't even want to give the man three or four hours to see if he was brain dead or not. They couldn't wait to go ahead and yank the plug on this guy. During a three-hour police standoff, Pickering threatened hospital staff. His other son was eventually able to get the gun from him. 
Pickering admitted to being drunk and aggressive, but said it was only because he knew that his son was not ready to die. During the standoff, Pickering's faith that his son had been misdiagnosed never wavered, and after he finally got the response he wanted from the boy, he surrendered peacefully to authorities. He's a hero. No, I'm not in favor of pulling a gun on somebody, but I'm also I'm not telling anybody to do it, nor am I saying I'm going to do it. But you also don't pull the plug on somebody when there's hope. And you don't jump to saying there's no hope just so you can free up a hospital bed. During the three hours, George squeezed my hand three or four times on command, he said. His son later came out of the coma and is now fully recovered. The charges against Pickering were eventually reduced and he was released earlier this month. His son said, There was a law broken, but it was broken for all the right reasons, and I'm now here because of it. It was love. That's what it was. It was love. So here we go, friends. The Dumdy Award is about to be read. Um, let me go ahead real quick, friends, and let you know. I didn't print it out yet, but there you go. You can see it. You can see right there the award. There it is. I'm going to print it out. I haven't been able to. It, I have been so backed up. And this show took me an hour and a half to put together. Two and a half months to compile. And I, yeah, I didn't print it. So, And to make a long story short, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. I'll show you the hat in a minute. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award goes to Tomball Regional Medical Center for not only rushing to pull the plug I wrote on a patient in spite of the wishes of his father, but for also forgiving the father basically no choice but to brandish firearms to save his son from being murdered by your so-called hospital. The father was correct, and you and the quacks there at your miserable hellhole had the man arrested. You have the empathy equal to that of a black mamba and are a blight on the medical world. For this reason, you, a Tombo Regional Medical Center, win the Dots Cap of the Month Award. You are quite vile. Here's the hat that I made. Yes, I made this one. There's a guy on a bed, a stick figure on a bed, said, don't kill me. Pull the plug, butchers. A uh, man pulls gun to save his son. Arrest him. Quacks almost kill a son. Free. There you go, friends. That is your <clears throat> Dunce Cap of the Month Award show. My voice is giving out. I am tired. Please donate to the show at the correct views at uh, hotmail.com. Good night, friends. I'm exhausted. God bless.